What's up, my friends? Hello. Morgan oh, and I, oh, we finally figured this out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my word. We got it. It's okay. We got it. Camera technical difficulties. We are way better at beads, wire, and art than we are about technology. That's so true. I would agree to that please, statement. <laughs> please forgive us. And since we called this a happy hour, let's everybody. Yes, cheers. Hello. Cheers. 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 So let me do a little introduction. Hi, everybody. I'm Morgan. I'm the site coordinator to the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art here in Bedford. Hi, and Morgan. Hello. And I am joined by Ms. Jen Judd and Ms. Michael Wiles. So uh, we are going to step you through some happy hour beating. So hopefully they have their beverages. You guys are all settled in and we've got people logging on right now. So that's good. Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit. Like I usually do. <laughs> it's what I normally do. That's what, I invited her a just, bad habit that just I have. To <laughs> just yes. a coffee talk. Coffee Let me talk. give you a topic. So I don't know if you realize this, but when I first met Morgan, like jewelry and like mm -hmm. fine fine craft is her original, like one of her highlights. And Thank so you. here she are. Thank here you. she is now. She's just a talker. I'm just a, I'm just coffee talking, but yes. it's not a you cup can of have coffee. the camera. Okay. Oh, well, okay. then I'm going to go in there. All right. Just a few announcements before I let you guys get settled. Grab a beverage. If you're just joining us, um, <coughs> excuse me, we'll get you a couple of minutes to settle in. All right. So if you guys enjoy and really like the programming, like this type of programming that we're bringing to you today, Please, please, please let us know. Your feedback, your feedback counts, and it, we appreciate it. So, like, yeah, I know I got into the New York accent, and it just stuck for a second. <laughs> uh, like, comment, share this video. It's appreciated, and we want to hear from you. So, please let us know how you feel. Additionally, um, you know, COVID is affecting everybody, especially nonprofits and especially museums. So, if you're enjoying this programming, please, please, please go to our website and the donation button is where you may make a don donation. No donation is too small. Anything is appreciated. So thank you so much if you, if you happen to find it in your heart to donate to us. Um, <clears throat> we are close to the public. Unfortunately, we are, we, that's just, uh, according to the governor's mandate, we are not able to be open to the public, but we will have a tour posted on Sam of Bedford's Facebook site that will give you a little bit of what the inside looks like while we're close to the public. And we'll let you know when we reopen to the public. So just stay tuned. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, the first time we shut down, it didn't hold us back. And neither is the second time that we're shutting down. We're still moving and preparing and gearing up and creating programs. And we're getting all kinds of really good things ready for you guys. Some will be waiting for you when we open to the public and some will be presented to you, such as this program, while we're shut down. So check back with us frequently and often. We're gonna post everything on our website, on our Facebook site, and the other sites for the other locations, Loretto, Ligonier, Altoona. So without further ado, hopefully I didn't talk too, too much and that New York accent didn't interfere a whole lot. <laughs> I might do it a little more. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, we're going to start, hopefully, to, to get into this beading. Let's, let's bead. Let's bead away. <laughs> All right, in the world of beading, I'm Jen Judd, and I've been here before at some other videos, and you know me, I, I like color, which is why we're sitting in my dark basement with Look colorful the color drinks of the and drink that she made me. <laughs> but alas, um, I am a... I'm a fan of the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art, not just because it brings a small town into the fine art world, but because they like me. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Jack. JK. Mm -mm. No. Anyway, no, so there, there is actually an exhibit right now that features four <clears throat> women in the four galleries upstairs, and guess what? I'm one of them. She sure is, and that room is amazing. And so, so Mor amazing. Morgan, so amazing. Morgan, yes, amazing. So Morgan, <laughs> I, I, she's, I said I want to do mixed media, and she said, well, what all do you want to put in? I said, well, most of my stuff's two dimensional, you know, up on the wall. But I have a collection of ornaments that I've made throughout the years with art beads. Art bead. You're going to get introduced to the word art bead today. Um, and I would like to include it in the, um, exhibit. And so there is actually a tree in there with 74, 75, 75 
different art beads. So what I'm going to do today is just introduce you to the world. Hi, Diane. Oh, my God. Mm, love you. And love you all that are coming on tonight. I mean, this is just too fun. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Oh, we're, look. Oh, my gosh. Look at how many people are watching. That's amazing. I know, we're getting on it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and so, I know. Morgan's like, I don't have any friends. This Hi. is really cool. I'm just real excited. <laughs> we're, anyway. We're, we're going to art. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I so, can't wait to art. So way back in my, my, my artful journey, if you've met me at all, you know, I was a military girl. But my I... On the outside of my uniform life, I had an art life. And so in about 2008, I took a beading class in Washington, D.C. at Bedazzled, which frankly, I don't even think exists anymore. Oh, and I took some wire working classes. And so it is just, it, it stuck. I don't know. You can see behind me. That's why I wanted to do this down here because some people call it hoarding. I would call it hoarding. Hoarding, like I. That's a lot of beads. I love beads. That's okay. a lot of beads. It's collecting. Yeah. <clears throat> collecting. Okay, so what well, is it's it? It's really well organized. So yeah. I feel like it's you know it is a collection. It is. Yeah, it's not hoarding. But it's going, a but landing into the bead world was the most phenomenal way for me to create community, which I think is even more important as I live through this time where I am stuck sitting in my house. <laughs> but I met these women. Mostly women. There's some men out there. These creatives. Little, they make little tiny works of art. Some are pottery. Some are glass. Some are metal. And I realized, like, mm, I can make jewelry. <laughs> Got it. All, everybody makes jewelry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not every, no. But I thought, I want, I want to keep them all. I want to hoard all of these things. And so I decided, I came up with what turned out to be kind of a simplistic, but functional design using cheap wire um basic wire working skills if you can see that and i am able to use all my beads i thought i might sell them but then i realized no i want to keep everyone they're unique right. each and every single i'm going to call them sculptural objects mm -hmm. because they are sculptural objects from each individual bead to the arrangement in which you put them and place them on the tree that's currently on exhibition in yeah. Sama, each single unique sculptural piece is so uh, overwhelming with an individuality. Uh, and they, they have their own voice and it's incredible. Just like the one that Michael held up, you know, there's, there's, they're per this one's purple and it's got like almost like a lollipop or a piece of candy kind of looking glass in the My center. My favorite guy is this little like, I don't know. Wasn't that a Pokemon? Let me hold that up. Let me see, so you guys can see what I'm it's talking like a about. Monster, isn't that? I mean, this is so cool. This is so, and this is glass with these little nubs. pink nubs on, and this is just like a piece of candy, but it's a big hunk of marbled glass. These are like little felt um, pom poms, and it's this is it's so unique. It's one of a kind. It's the only one like it in the whole entire world, and we have an entire tree in the upstairs. That she was gracious enough to allow us to put on display. All right, so now I'm going to interject. So those artists, mm -hmm. yes, I can't own. I can't honestly remember who made the big one, but the cool, funky one with the little dots. That's Carrie Bogger. Carrie, miss you. She doesn't make, she doesn't make glass beads much anymore, but she certainly is still in the creative realm, and she's raising kids. I don't even know how on earth she keeps it all together. All right, so we're going to start. I'm going to talk a little bit about the beads, right? My very first glass beads were from Lisa New. Lisa was down in Florida. My computer just went out, scared me. And I thought, someone takes glass and puts it in a fire and makes a, something out of it. Like, how can that even possibly be? So then I started realizing that like, here's another one. This one, this is another one from Carrie. You can see the dots. Each, the flame, the dots, the color. I mean, it's a little magical work of art. It is small-scale art. It's symmetrical. I mean, some of them aren't symmetrical, but that makes them cool. Anyway, so I've met a few bead artists. So I'm going to talk just about, just about the beads. Look at this. This little piece matted glass look at the stringers and the work 
That's this beautiful. one's from Donna Millard. Donna's now working in pottery. Oh, you should see her work. Millard. I'll have to, yes, Donna. I'll have to I'll have to do a um I'll have to do a list of all my favorite artists. And let's see. And this week, for this class specifically, I contacted a Pennsylvania artist, because we love our Pennsylvania artists. We sure do. Heather Boardman. I mean, she's over in Philly, so she's maybe not Southern Alleghenies. But she makes my favorite discs. All right, what's a disc bead? It's a piece like this. It's thin, but she takes it. I mean, this is, she's taking a, she's using a flame and she's melting glass and making it into this shape and twisting it and combining the colors. I mean, ugh. And if you've ever seen glass being blown, um, you know, that's, that's a skill set unto itself. I mean, it operates a lot like, like taffy, like a, like a molten taffy, but yeah. it's a very dangerous molten yeah. taffy. Don't so, eat it. Yeah. Don't, don't taste test any of that. But, uh, if you think about that in terms of and working on such itty bitty small scale, you know, that's a lot of talent. That's, yeah. That's... When it's, and some of this isn't blown necessarily, it's lamp work. So you could, li it's literally a torch mm. and glass. You don't have to blow on anything. Oh, don't get crazy. Oh, well, I'm see. I don't. I'm, I'm just, learning right now. She's getting I'm her. Learning. She's getting her learn on. I am. Lamp working. You gotta go Google that. Hashtag lamp working. <laughs> Hashtag art beads. Oh. Anyway, yeah. So the the one of the most fun experiences I had with my <laughs> friend. I was so my blog friend. I was living in Alabama, and my friend uh, Julianne Connor, uh, Cannon, Jules Jules Cannon. Oh my God, Jules. She's like. <laughs> Would you like to come to my house and learn how to do that? Yes, I would, as a matter of fact. So she actually taught me how to do this. It's hard, just so <laughs> you know. So I believe it. Appreciate this. When, let me show you it. one more. This is from my friend Donna. This is incredible, look this piece. The, look at the florals on this. We're we going we're gonna to use this as one of the focals for one of our ornaments. Does the darker background help? I'm wondering to highlight kind of... Not really. It, <laughs> there's so many delicate color shifts and what she's got, what she just held up, it, it's really, really remarkable. It's beautiful. The camera's not really doing it justice. It is really it's okay, gorgeous. It's okay, because they're all mine anyway. <laughs> hey, hey, Jen, what are we drinking tonight? <clears throat> oh, that's right. We're a special um, happy hour. We have from Julie's Horrible Art. I don't know if you realize this. Julie's my best friend. And <laughs> so we're using these camp cocktails. We put... Um, triple sec and vodka in and we let it sit for a while more than three days and then we just mix it with soda look how beautiful Delicious. though the color's gorgeous so yeah. pretty it's a beautiful color thank, thank you julie, julie. Yeah, julie also you, helped julie. us make some beads for tonight which i'll get to in a minute we're working yes, did. we're working down the hierarchy so first we started with lamp work glass now we're going to start with pottery my pottery artist friends let's see mm -hmm. we've got lisa peters Nancy Adams, Jenny Davies, Razor, Marsha Neal, um, and Mary Harding. These, uh, and then Christy. I ordered some specifically for Christy Roder. She's another Pennsylvania artist, artisan beads. And this, look at this. She uses pottery and recycled glass to make these beautiful creations. And she, embed, she embeds um, some, you know, little bits so you can hang, hang them. But, little wire loops. So, for example, I would take that. Oh my God, we just looked ahead, but I would take that and use it <laughs> as one of my danglies. Oh my gosh, there's Aunt Sarah just joined us. So This is my favorite one. These really unique works I love from Christy. One. It's beautiful. I mean, we've been friends now for years and years and years. She's tr she flips houses, she raises kids, and she makes pretty stuff in she her She sure does. Beautiful things. Wow. Beautiful things. And then... I feel like inadequate. <laughs> I know, like, uh, I played games on my phone today. Anyway, so what I want to do then now is talk about the wire working. Ha wire. There's lots of wire. You're like, oh, uh, yes, my husband's or my toolbox. I can't even believe I just said that, my husband's toolbox. I don't even have a husband, let alone a toolbox. So... <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of different varieties anyway, of wire. There's a right, there. yeah. Well, there's lots of variety. Yeah. There's lots of tools. Variety of tools. Okay, so let's talk. Yes. We are going to use, for today's class, we're going to use this. This is 12 gauge. Okay, so in the world of wire, the smaller the number is bigger. It's an inversely proportionate scale, and it makes it very confusing when you go to black I wire. Wish, <laughs> I wish 
she could say that more confusingly. I know. I was like, how about for the but normal no, people? Literally, so literally <laughs> this brand is my favorite like... brand from Michaels. Uh, yeah. It's decorative wires in the floral section. Okay. And the reason why I like this is because it's shiny and it <laughs> is soft and it's, I, it's cheap, frankly. Like I'm using, look at, look, we didn't talk about this, but some of these beads, like this, per, this bad boy probably cost 50 bucks. I know I got an issue. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> it's beautiful. But I'm like, um, what should I do with it? Can I put it on $2 worth of wire? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But also I don't feel bad when I waste stuff. So that's the thing. Feeling bad when you waste. You can use other types of wire. You can use steel wire from the store you can use copper wire whatever you want but i think this thick stuff really makes a real it may it makes a statement and this is what i've used consistently through my piece i also prefer the silver color because if you get the copper or the gold there's a color coating on it and when you start to work with it it will start to flake and come off so even if it's real copper Oh no, because it's this this brand um, of copper. Yeah. So uh, in a in a previous life, I was a jeweler, and I have a little insight to the to the wire world as well. Um, the copper and fine pure metals like silver will tarnish too. So that's important to note. The aluminum will not tarnish, and if you get the anodized aluminum and are able to work with it very delicately, the anod the anodized coating on the outside will remain the same color. And you can actually buy that in a variety of different colors, greens, pinks, purples, blues. But um, this aluminum will be lightweight and flexible for you. You can make earrings out of this stuff. <clears throat> you could. Mm -hmm. Look at Aluminum's aluminum. Meanwhile, back at, the, back at the metal nerd. Again, <laughs> let's go back. This is the brand I like. I did buy some off the internet because I thought we would try it. But it looks very industrial and... Yeah. I was like, uh, we're, gonna, we're just stick, we're sticking with Michael's Floral. I, I will. I can show you how that stuff changes. Okay, so now. Can I have ooh. a twig of metal? A twig, yes. There's a twig. Oh, she's got a twig. Okay, Take that tools. One. I'll work on this one. Tools, tools, tools. All right. You might have needle nose pliers. You might have round nose pliers. You might have flat nose pliers. Do you know that those all, all those things exist? Okay, so let's talk just briefly. The nose needle nose, important. Needle nose pliers. I don't even know I, this is needle nose it's flat in the center and round on the outside so when you put it together it looks like, like a, bird a point beak. Bird beak. Mm -hmm. needle nose that's pliers number one round nose both sides are round also looks like a bird beak they all look like bird <laughs> beak both sides are round and now flat bird beak <laughs> what bird has a square flat beak like that <laughs> i did not invite these two i don't even know no so those are the through my three go-to's you can also get really cool specialty <laughs> pliers that have larger bail making so you can make larger circles but i'll show you how to make big circles with the little pliers too it's not a bird beak and then you've got your cutters your wire cutters now you can use you know the wire cutters out of your regular toolbox but i highly recommend that you have wire cutters that are flush cut you can see i've had these these are soft flex a flush cut means that when you cut the wire one side is flat all right you want to say <laughs> i'm using my flush cut uh, uh, uh. It's flat. If I went like this, the other way, it would have a point on it. That, mm -mm. we do not like pointy wire. It's sharp. We want flush cut. I mean, we can always get rid of that, but look at that, flush cut. So, if you're buying yourself some jewelry wires, you want flush cuts. Cutters. Yes, cutters. Okay, so, how do you start, how do you start making it? Hi, brother. How do you start making an ornament? You're going to pick, I'm going to pick a focal. Uh, honest to God, I cheated. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> I'm going to start with a piece of wire and I'm going to make, this is called a simple loop. Watch this. Round nose pliers. There you go. It's flush cut already. I'm holding the wire still and I'm making a loop. 
Okay. Well, but now it's sideways. Well, that's when you go in, you can use your needle nose or your flat nose, and you go like this. Jeanette Blix, who taught me my first wire glass, she'll be so proud of me. You just break the neck. Look at that! And now it's like centered. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we have, because we're going to either put a hook there, we're going to put a dangly, we're going to put something on there. And now we're going to start stringing some beads. May I have a pair of, thank you. Thank you. This, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this bead first. This is a big old hollow bubble with really cool dots on it. I've got another hollow. These are, these are both from Carrie. Look at these little dots. Here's some, here's some stuff from Heather, these glass. But I'm going to use this as my focal. It has yellow and blue. Yes, lovely. Very logical color combination. Well, I'm thinking, I want to have about, mm, what's this? Seven inches? Yeah, ask your favorite boyfriend that. <laughs> just kidding. I'm <laughs> um, just kidding. That was, uh, we really just want like, we want like three inches probably of beads. And, then, and that doesn't include the dangle or the hook. And you'll need room to finish at the top. So that's why you're saying with the distance. Yeah. So, so I'm just using this big <clears throat> wire. That's why I like this cheap yes. wire. Yes. The more wire. And you can always trim it later once you decided if you've filled up the uh, whatever length of i mean really you could make whatever length you really wanted to hang on a christmas I mean, tree yeah you, yes. you really could as long as you know at the top you have enough to make the top loop yeah it's your length mm -hmm. you do what you want with it here buddy so we're going to talk about this yellow thing now i've got some glass beads that i picked out of my collection but i'm thinking what else do i want with this yeah these are expensive okay got it what if i want to do something less expensive to add to it <laughs> How Yay. about if I call my friend and I say, um, you want to come over for dinner? I need you to color beads with me. Well, I bought some, I bought some wooden beads. Wood. I think they're from Michael's. They have big holes, so they fit on my wire. And you could use them plain, but I also was like, well, I have about 7,000 kinds of paint and things, so let's go ahead and paint up some of these. So I think I'm going to take one of these. Okay, and Julie wants to make sure I mention this. Julie's beads, organized and beautiful. <laughs> Mine, not so much. <laughs> show, no, show, show, show. No, no, we don't need to show. <laughs> So I'm going to take one of these really cool, we used India inks, we used regular inks, They're really we used acrylic unique. paint. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. But look at this, how cool this blue, and it's a, just a painted wooden ball. Can't go wrong with a wooden ball. I'm going to put on a disc, put on my focal, because that's my most important bead of the day. I'm going to put on my wooden bead that I love. <laughs> oh, went the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry. Fixed it. Okay. So now I'm look I've got this. How does it look? I don't know. I don't like the fact that it goes from big, small, and then bigger. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna switch them around. Uh, oh wait, you're going wild. I have it. Beats going wild. Caught it. Yeah. So this is where the design piece comes in. You want it to look balanced. Look at that. We're using the nice colors. We're using the focal to decide mm -hmm. on the colors. And we've made uh, 17 inches. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm funny. I don't know. <laughs> two and a half inches. And so now, and I'll do, let's see. Let's do one more. Some blue or some yellow? No, we're going to do this one. Okay. Right here. This is a blue and purple one that I made out of paper. But I don't so now. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. We're going to we're going to cut it off. Mm -hmm. You need a little bit on top cuz guess what we've got to make a loop. So we have to make a loop for the hook. We're going to put a hook on top and we're going to put a dangle at the bottom. Watch out. <laughs> Oh my god, we're halfway through this. This is already. where the magic happens. Okay, here. now you're afraid you're going to cut off too much or you're not going to have enough. Okay, watch this. <gasps> Do not throw it at yourself or poke your eye out. Wear safety glasses. <laughs> I'm gonna use my tool like this, but you could use you could use a pencil. Just crying out loud. And I want it to be opposite this direction. 
I'm gonna bend it around. There you go. Look at that. There you go. You're like, oh, Jen, you just made a loop. It doesn't really look that good, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bend it. Break the neck. I'm gonna break the neck. And then I'm gonna chop off. I'm gonna chop off the tail. <laughs> tail chopper. I'm from Bedford, and we. I don't hunt, but I could break some necks and I could chop some tails. <laughs> if someone brings me some squirrel tonight, Just don't even start. Stop. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, so there. So now it's stopped. All right, so the other tool we didn't talk about is the chasing hammer Ooh. and the steel bench block. Yes, it makes a terrible noise. So what I'm going to do, you can you can see this on the TV, I think. The TV. Do you want me to hold it? I think we're okay. actually okay. okay. We just can't see it. I'm going to add a little dimension. Morgan can tell you mm -hmm. about how this strengthens the metal, so it's less likely to bend. Uh, it's some molecular bullshit. No, <laughs> no what happens is... <laughs> Through the act of hitting it with the hammer and it being sandwiched be between the two steel plates, essentially, and being impacted, the molecular structure actually tightens and work hardens the metal. So, you, but it also makes but it also makes it look pretty. It makes it almost look like a cali like a calligraphy, where it's thin, thick, and thin, or thin, thick, and thin. But now it's less likely to bend. Now, in order for us to make this amazing. We have to have a hook on it to put on our tree. So I'm going to take this other piece of metal. Look, it already has a little hook on it because that's what I showed you really. To me, this was one of the biggest lessons that I learned was how to make a, a um, spiral. Hmm. I'm actually going to use round nose pliers to start it. I'm going to make a little circle in the middle. Gently. I'm not squeezing the living daylights out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm letting. I, I, I'm not. Oh, I'm not twisting it so crazy with the with the pliers, and I'm using the wire. Oh, look at that! I'm letting the wire bend. Okay, now I've got this. Now I've got it started. So now I'm going to use my flat pliers, and I'm going to grab it sideways. Watch, like a pancake. And I'm going to turn the wire while holding it like a pancake. So gripping it sideways is actually I'm gripping it sideways. <clears throat> now, am I going to make some marks in it? Probably. But I'm not trying to twist it like this. I'm twisting it little by little. And that's why this lovely wire is so nice. Mm-hmm. If you happen to make a mistake, it's actually soft enough that you could manipulate it. A because little now further. I'm like, I don't like the way that's bent, so yeah. I'm going to bend the top. Now I just made this little dangler, and it looks pretty decent. That's a nice little spiral. And now I'm going to hammer it a little bit. Great. Wow. She can take it apart later if she doesn't like it. We flatten this bad boy up. So now, here's one of the keys. Opening a simple loop. We're going to put, this is going to be the bottom because I want the heavy part at the bottom. You can see it's curled over. How would you normally open it? You'd say, eh, I'm going to open it up like this. No. <laughs> Instead, you're going to go like this. See? Instead of. You don't want to this, turn. you're going to go this. So I'm going to go... Billy mouth, not, not dinosaur mouth. So I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to take my little dangler. Do you have a dangler? And I'm going to shut it. There you go. So I opened it and shut it. And now, look at that. Oh. Completed. Ready? Got some weird looking... May I borrow your flush cutters, please? Thank you. Pretty beads. Very pretty beads. Get a little extra. Now we gotta make a hook for it. This is probably the easiest part, but we can make it harder if we need to. Because we usually do make things harder. 
she just gave me these flush cut pieces, which I'm just going to steal from her. Do it. So what I want to do is I want to make it have a little bit of a squiggle. So we're going to start it. We're going to start our spiral. See how we're starting our spiral? She's in the middle of a spiral. We'll showcase this. I'm not after. used to working with other people in the room, so I don't even know who these people are. Why, why are they even here? I walked in off the street. Yeah, they might as well have. I kind of just okay, so now spiral. I'm going, so I'm working on a spiral, but I need a place to hang my, hang my piece. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a divot. It's really well done. Now, it has to go the other way, right? Mm. What? <laughs> a hook? I think Morgan's surprised I know what's going on. I'm not surprised. You amaze me all the time. I think you're an incredibly talented young, young lady. <laughs> you're fantastic at what you she do. She just called me a young lady. She did. I have another drink. <laughs> so... Flush cutters are here. I took no, them from me. Oh. No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm cheating and using oh. one of my big tools. Oh, oh, Look at oh. this. Ooh, you brought the big gun. I out. brought the big gun. This is my favorite. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Find, mind you, you, all, you could use a piece of wood. But look, now I made a cute little hook. Oh, I'm going nice. to hammer it. It's beautiful. Sarah, no, Don't there are people finger. in the room. That's the problem. If it's yeah, if it's cats, they're fine. They don't try to tell me what to do. So now, can we squeeze this baby on? Look. And now it can hang on a tree. Wow. That's great. It's beautiful. Yeah. This is a great gift too. A handcrafted gift. Oh my, that's a heck of an earring. Okay. Now, while we were working on our ornament. Somebody was busy over here. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a circus. No, it does look like a circus, but it looks like an amazing circus. So she followed she followed the rules. She picked colors that she loved, mm -hmm. purple and green. She found these focals. These are paper beads that carry all the colors. Mm -hmm. She used some of the wood and some of the glass. Oh, and then she found this variegated glass bead. Honest to God, I don't know who on earth made that. <laughs> No, I mean, like, one of my glass artist peeps. It's in my, it's in my special glass drawer. She did a great job of creating the loops. That's working. She only left a zillion tool marks. <laughs> What's getting hammered? <laughs> so now what should we do with this? I think we can create a little bit of a pendant at the end. Let's go with... We're going to pull some blue in from one of these beads. So I'm going to take, I'm going to flush cut the end of this. Let me just show you how to make a little tiny pendant. Use a little circle. I'm, going to use, I'm making a tight spiral this time. I was making a loose spiral the last time. So now I'm going to make a tight spiral. This may not seem... Still doing it from the side. Remember how I told you I'm holding it from the side. I'm not trying to bend the whole thing around or twist my arm. Which, <laughs> believe me, we've all been there and done that. But I'm just pulling the wire, the loose wire, tighter around. And now I'm going to break the neck. So this becomes the end of my pendant. Mm hammer a little bit because well I can now I've got this really cool big old blue felt ball look at that great texture I'm gonna make a little loop on the top let's see simple loop Break the neck. Hammer that bad boy out. So now I've got this great little pendant. This literally could be a piece of jewelry. 
If I had two of them, I could probably make an earring. Yeah. That'd because be this nice wire is nice and light. But remember, I showed you how to open up the simple loop sideways. And we're going to slide it onto this piece, close the loop. It looks great. How cute is that? It brings the whole color family together. It does. We've got this lovely cool, cool color combination. And it makes a noise. <laughs> <laughs> we need a we need a hook for this baby. I feel like you need ornament. to talk about these nuts. Anybody have any questions? What else do you want to talk about? Big hole beads are the best. No. Oh, that's a good one. We'll talk about big hole beads. That's beautiful. This pendant is made out of onion skin. Oh, I thought that was a leaf. Oh, wow, that's onion skin. That's really I think beautiful. Maybe, I think it's onion skin. It wow, be, I don't know. wow. There's at, a, oh, I hope you have my name for Christmas. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah. And these babies, so like if, you're looking for, nuts. if you're looking for <laughs> other options for nuts. So have you ever been to Hawaii? Mm, I have been blessed to visit friends, and these are kukui nuts, I think is what they're called. Mm -hmm. And they paint them. There's about a zillion different colors of them, and they've got great big holes. I love them. They feel nice. Stick your hand in that And bucket. so you can use nuts and seeds. That's always an option. Um, these paper beads. Okay, there are plenty of, um, what do I want to say, free trade, you know, crafts beads coming from the third world. But you can also make them yourself. It's a triangle. It's rolled up like a croissant. Paper Bead Girl. Paper mm -hmm. Bead Girl is the name of the company. She came up with a tool to help put those bad boys together. Oh, you know what we need to use? We need to use my Mary Harding bead. So this week, while I was wandering the interwebs looking for things to use for this class, I bought this gorgeous oh, that's so pretty. pendant with this ginkgo. Oh, also, don't forget to buy that. Talk Do we need that? that? Yeah. Uh-oh. She's like, we have a lot of things to talk about. I thought we had a good outline, apparently. Uh -huh. There's just a, a lot of really unique uh, specialized beads in front of us all. They're just, there's a lot to talk about. Here, do you want to make up something with us? Sure. So we're going to do something with this Mary Harding bead. And then we're going to talk about this, this Stacy Smith bead. Look at this. That's really this beautiful. is made out of polymer clay. Isn't that crazy? It's plastic clay. She works magic with it to create all these wonderful textures. What'd you call it? Unicorn horn. That's a unicorn horn. Or the narwhal. But this horn. would be perfect <laughs> if we hang it with some um, fanciful glass. She wants an idea about paper beads. Sarah. I looked for my paper bead stuff, and I can't find it. I will have to find it, and you and I will have a private lesson. How about that? <laughs> it's, it's, I, I don't, these are what they end up looking like. I used India ink to create the colors, and I was really bored. I was stationed in Norfolk or in Hampton, Virginia, and I needed something to do, so that's what I did during the evening. Okay, so we talked a little bit about art beads. These are little tiny pieces of art. I highly recommend that you go Google or look in, look up art beads. There are still wonderful, vibrant communities that sell these gorgeous pieces. Porcelain recycled glass, lamp work glass, polymer clay. I, I just, I can't even say enough for these the lovely women like I said, mostly women Metal. who create these beads. It's a lot of fun to put these together too and just kind of sit down and play and uh, look at what you're pairing together. And, and I mean, this is I just I literally a, sit and stare at this hoard for days, which yeah. I have done in preparation for this class. It's a lot of fun. If you're interested in trying to learn more about wire working, you can look again, interweave. We've got step-by-step -step wire. I didn't show you this really. This is my first article that I was ever published. Look at this. This was in spring of 2009. That's Look awesome. At, I was, I made a daring squiggle necklace. Look, there you are right there. Yeah. Famous. Good job, I, Jen. I had like 700 less chins. It was really awesome. 
Um, but I also was just learning how to use wire and I felt confident. Um, or if you've got any questions, you can always look me up via the Southern Allegheny's Museum of Art website or through the blog or through any of their public relations. Or, or your own. Yeah. But on that note, I, I think... To steal some wire, please. Oh, th well, she's please. stealing wire. I'm stealing wire. But I'm making something new. I'm going to add a, a second dangle. Have you ever done that? A double dangle? A double We're, dangle? I'm not double dangling. <laughs> There's no double... Should I not double dangle? You can double dangle okay. for you, but I'm not... It could so, be a double dangle okay, failure. So let's, but, 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 okay. but, but, like, let me just say, you could use beads and wire to make any amazing ornament that you want. I believe that my collection is cool because it's consistent. And so when we're talking about my artist view, I made a consistent view. Like there's not mixed metal. There's not crazy dimensional. They're all straight. They're all long. And that doesn't make it bad or boring. It makes it consistent and beautiful in my mind. So when we're talking about art stuff, it's not about what other people want. It's about what you want. And she's messing with my beads right behind me. I am. I'm so sorry. No, I'm just kidding. At least it's all on camera and you'll know if I disappear what kidding. happened. But what I think is important <laughs> to note, but I, what I think is important to note is that there's no one right way to do things. And so I just wanted to introduce you to my beads and my bead friends. And I wanted to talk about my exhibit. Something else too is if you screw it up, all you got to do is take it apart. Yes, that is very anything. good. You can just take it apart. <clears throat> and so we're going to let her finish this one so she can show you. Yeah. Uh, I have to thank you, Jen, for sharing um, not only your amazing collection, your, your resource list, and the ladies that inspired you over the years. Um, you know, that in and of itself is a tremendous asset to see how... How long do I need to make that? I don't know. Cut extra. It's cheap, remember? Right. Good point. Cut extra. It's cheap. <laughs> um, and if you folks at home get a chance to stop into the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art when we're open back to the public. I'll talk um, after January 4th. Uh, well, hopefully it's after January 4th. I mean, we'll see what happens. But um, Jen's tree is a sight to see. It's certainly something to come in and view. Mm -hmm. And it takes to see 75 different pieces of sculptural art takes you a little bit of time. So give yourself a good hour. Come talk to us. Come hang out with us. And uh, come look at some of Jen's amazing stuff because it's pretty phenomenal. Well, Diane wants to know if we can do it <clears throat> virtual. Diane, because you are my BFF with the cutest kids ever. Well, today of ever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We, would, we could set something up. We could go in there and do you a walkthrough virtually any day. So All you got to do is make it convenient for you. We can make a special uh, one specific to the tree, Diane. We do have actually a virtual tour coming that we're going to be posting onto the Sam of Bedford Facebook site very soon. And that's going to give you a tour of the entire show upstairs, downstairs, the Titleman Galleries with the permanent collection and the upstairs local regional galleries, which include Jen. But we can maybe do a special one on just the tree. So we'll get you taken She's care She's my of. friends. She just wants to see my stuff. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, it's incredible stuff. It's wonderful stuff. She owns some at her house. Um, is there okay. anything else we want to talk to these folks about? Hmm. Or do you think we're ready to all set forth for the weekend? That will be no different than the last three days. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. I There are still some folks working. I work in the hospitality food and beverage industry for my regular job so i'm going to use this weekend to be creative and i hope that uh you will too and i hope that you will consider clicking on the give button on the southern allegheny museum of art wandering around the internet looking at art beads finding little pieces of wood and putting paint on them because frankly it just feels good and then wiring them up and hanging them for christmas we were delighted to be here with you this evening. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, 
comments, concerns, and thank you, Mary Lee. Have a wonderful weekend. Beating extravaganza. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. Yes, as Jen mentioned, please, if you like the programming that you're seeing here, just make sure that uh, you at least comment or share or like the video. And, um, you know, if you have suggestions for future shows, you know, throw them out our way. Jen and I are currently working on putting together a plan where we might be learning with you. There's a new technique that I've never done. Now, you're a watercolorist, so you're going to be a lot more advanced in this particular field than I am. But we're probably going to learn it together because I don't think you've ever done it before. Is that we're correct? Gonna, we're going to we're going to whiner color. We're going to whiner color. <laughs> yeah, that's something you don't want to miss, guys. You yeah. do not want to miss that. I mean, on that note, I'm kind of curious how it's going to go. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be awesome. And I'm not a watercolorist, so it's going to be an interesting... That's because you don't need water. It's yeah. wine or well, color. Well, come on, more. That's true. That's All right. true. Thanks, y'all. Thank Thanks you so for much. joining us Bye. tonight. Have a fabulous, safe, healthy weekend. Take care.